Today, the workplace is more dynamic and diverse than it's ever been. Four generations coming together to contribute to our economy's growth. But new challenges in the workplace are growing each and every day. This podcast brings corporate leaders to you, sharing solutions and strategies to enhance your company's culture and bring your people together. Rise Up For You presents its newest podcast series, Workplace Solutions, People Hi, everyone. Welcome. Happy Wednesday. This is Natalina Nasserdine with Rise Up For You. So honored to be here for our weekly podcast show, Workplace Solutions. So excited to be here with David DeRocher. Did I say it right? You, you did. <laughs> one, of the, one of the few. You know, I don't know why it's, it, it's difficult, but it is. So. <laughs> okay, well, great. I'm so excited. Thank you. So today I'm going to be talking with Dave DeRocher on a multitude of things, but specifically career happiness and what that looks like. So we're going to go ahead and start, Dave. And I just, I always love to start by asking our guests to tell us a little bit about themselves and what they do in their own words. Well, uh, as you mentioned, my name is Dave DeRosha, and I'm the vice president and partner of uh, Path2, and we are an online career discovery program. Um, it's uh, it's actually a, a, a passion of mine, and I, I love doing it. We have a couple of programs, one that helps students uh, discover their best suited career so they can define a major instead of doing college backwards like we've been doing for, for decades. It's, you know... D- begin with the end in mind, you know, Stephen Covey's uh, second habit of highly effective people, right? So figure out what you want to do first and then determine a major. And then um, and then our other program is helping people in transition. And uh, we, we'd love working with veterans, helping them transition from service to civilian life, professional athletes, giving them an exit strategy or a game plan. And then the 70 million people that uh, are disengaged in their current uh, positions. Yeah, so this is a big topic and it's it's really, really important because as you know, and many of us know from the research before we even got into COVID that 70% of working professionals were just not happy in their job. Now, some of it had to do with leadership and it had to do with, you know, maybe the company they were working with, but part of it was also that they didn't find purpose or meaning or maybe they didn't enter into an industry, um, you know, what the experience that they thought it was going to be. So talk to us a little bit more about career happiness, because a lot of our clients, even today, there's this constant chase, right? This chase for success, this chase for happiness in their career. And some people just never find it. So talk to us a little bit about that and and what you're doing to help with that. Well, so that that 70 percent statistic that you stated is is 100 percent accurate. Uh, I've heard Gallup's up to 81 percent. But, you know, that's it's it's a big number. Let's just agree to that. And it starts with the, the choices that a lot of young people make, you know, whether it be entering college, you know, uh, 70% of them accept jobs that don't require a degree that they, that they, that they studied, you know, 40% um, are, are taking jobs that don't require a degree at all. So only 30% are, are finding jobs with that utilizes their degree. So it, it's a direct correlation to, to their current, you know, uh, status of being disengaged. And so it can be it can be rectified if you take some steps early on, um, because what happens is is that as we all know, regardless of how long it takes you to graduate, um, once you graduate, seventy percent of the kids are leaving with uh, an average debt of thirty five thousand, and that first payment's due in what six months. Yeah. So so it's like okay, well, okay, I can't find a job with using my degree or even using a degree at all, and I need a payment, and I've got a car, and I've got this, and then they just take a job. And then they take on a, a additional obligations, and then they're trapped. And then, and then it's just, it's just a, it's unfortunately, um, you know, a, a situation that it's hard to change once you get in that in that position. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, do you feel like we're equipping? Let, so, let's talk with specifically when it comes to youth now that are like moving into career and workplaces, because I could tell you just with working with corporations. There's a, a big gap between this the new generation, specifically the iGen, and really finding fulfillment in their careers and really just communicating, you know, with everybody else, the other generation. So, 
what are we doing wrong? Or what do we need to be doing to help prepare students to start thinking about the career trajectory once they get out of college? Or, or what are some of the method, methods that we need to start sure. thinking about? What, it's, it's when they enter college is what we propose. Because you know what, what we've been doing for decades is we've been doing college backwards. It's preparation, 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 ACT, uh, SAT, GPA, check the boxes, extracurricular, and, and then get there, you know, and then application, get accepted, and then choose the college. And then once you're there, okay, what am I going to major in? And then no, no thought of where are you going to go after that? So you step onto campus and you've done all these great things and then you get dropped off and there's no game plan. And then, and that's why 70% of kids are changing their major once and 33% are changing it twice or more. That's why it's taking up to six years now on average to graduate. There's no game plan. So well, how can we make a difference is, is we get them thinking about all of their intrinsic characteristics, all the things within them that is going to set them up to be both happy and then therefore successful. Because happiness always breeds some form of success. It's not always monetary, right? Yeah. It could be just digging what you do and, and, and then being a purpose driven or come home satisfied and happy. And then you're a better person at home. You're a better person in your life and you're a better person at your job and then have a better opportunity to be successful. But, and that is, so doing some work and find out those things about you that what we've been doing wrong, take an app, take an assessment, take a 25 minute assessment. And what you need to do is take them more than once, because I can assure you this, if you take it more than once, the results will be different every time. Those black box algorithm, you know, answer 40 questions and they're kicking out careers. And that's what people use to make their decisions. And, and they really don't question it. But we do. And we have. And we've researched them. And it's just amazing where they fall short. They're half measures at best. Yeah. Yeah, that's key. So I know that you talk a lot about purpose versus agenda mm -hmm. like speak to us a little bit more what i mean i'd love to hear your takes on purpose because i feel like that such that word is used a lot so i, I want to learn more about that from you well so what i found when uh, in my 20 years of financial advising um is that and it took me a minute to get there you know so when you approach any kind of uh, opportunity or relationship or even just a, a sales presentation there's two two ways to approach it one is purpose driven and the other one is with an agenda and I start with agenda because the agenda is all about you. What is this going to do for me? What is what is me being on your podcast going to do for me? What is this, you know, this sales opportunity? What what am I going to get out of it? Well, you've already lost. If that's if that's the approach that you're going to take, you've lost even if you win. If that if that makes sense. So yeah. if the person has a dollar sign over their head and you're a good salesperson, you're going to get it. But then that person is going to feel sold. Nobody likes to be sold. And it's a transaction and there's zero relationship and they're not going to they're not going to do possibly any more business with you because there's not a there is no value. There's just no relationship. Now, purpose driven purpose is what can I do for you? How can I be of value to you? What can I provide you and how can we establish a relationship that I don't even know what it's going to look like? And when I started taking that approach. Um, I, I forged these great relationships and quite often I didn't even do business with the person across from me. I did business with their friends or, or, or other relationships or re was referred to them. And if I have a second, I have just the perfect example of this. Yeah. Um, I, I sat across from a young couple and they had their baby and, and she said, my dad told me to come and talk to our financial advisor, a financial advisor, and set up a college fund for our baby. And we want to start with a hundred dollars a month. And I said, okay, well, May I make a suggestion? May I suggest that you start with $25 a month? Because $25, you know, you could pretty easily do that. Because if you start with 100 and you haven't really budgeted correctly for it and Christmas comes around, you don't reduce it to 25. Most people typically just stop and then you don't start back up. So let's start with a manageable amount. And then if you get a raise or if you want to increase it, then you can increase it. And most people will do that. They said, okay, that makes sense. And then I showed them some mutual funds. And I, oh my gosh, you know, can we just open the account? I said, no, this is this is what I love doing and I want to, you know, educate you. And so when we got done, of course, they set up the account. Well, I didn't make any money doing that, you know, and, and there's a lot of people that are financial advisors that will pre-qualify them and not even uh, waste their time. Well, a few weeks later, dad came in and said, you know, I just wanted to introduce myself. And thank you. My daughter told me everything you did and talked her out of giving you money. Uh, and so 
I just thought that that was great advice. I saw what you referred to her. And gee, I've been thinking about having somebody else take a look at my portfolio. Would you mind doing that for me? And I said, sure, I absolutely will. And I met with him again. And then the third time he said, you know, Dave, I really appreciate the time you've taken with us. My first check with him was $800,000. And I ended up doing 2.5 million with the dad because of the time that I spent to create value, to do my job, because I love what I do. So if you take that approach, you never know how it's going to pay off, but you forge relationships and you will not only do business with them, but you'll do business with them in the future and then the people that they know. And that's, I just think that, and regardless of, of it doesn't even necessarily be, need to be a sales you know, deal because it, it's any approach. If you take a purpose versus an agenda approach, you're going to be a winner. Yeah, I, I love that you just said that. And I appreciate the story because I think it's absolutely right. We, you know, approaching your career that way and just approaching life that way. And that's these people skills, right? It's not about mm. your technique. It's how can I add value? How can I serve? How can I be a leader personally to the community with others without thinking of the outcome? Like, what am I going to get in return? Which sometimes we can get caught into that trap. So I think that right. that's really beautifully said and uh, thank you for sharing that story i know you talk a little bit about the what is it the more better quickly philosophy did i get that right tell me more, what that means more, <laughs> more better quicker so if if if, uh, if you want to be an essential employee even if you're not in an essential business if you're doing things more than expected better than expected and quicker than expected you are going to be an essential employee for that company not only that you will be highly regarded and of a tremendous value and so I, I guess I tell stories if I can. Um, an yeah. example of that is this. And, and um, you know, I got to be, uh, uh, you know, I got, you can tell by the helmets, I played a little bit of football. I got to the highest level of sport, not being very good when I was younger. And it, and it, and it came through a lot of hard work and resilience and other things of that nature. But what carried forward in my professional career was being able, was doing the little things that nobody else wanted to do and doing them better than anyone else. And when I first became and first got licensed as a financial advisor, my senior advisor, my job was, and for those of you, you might, you might not even know what a phone book is. Have you seen a phone book? I, I know, know you what are. a phone book is. <laughs> okay, well, I'm old. So, you know, uh, and, and for those of you that are younger, a phone book, that's how we used to contact people. And it was a big, thick book. And my job was to take a phone book and, and I was required to contact or, or dial at least 30 numbers and make at least 10 contacts and set two appointments for my senior advisor. And, and most people hate that. It's called cold calling. You know, I'm calling complete strangers, introducing myself, and then and talking them into coming in and seeing us about their money. And it doesn't sound like fun to very many people. It didn't sound like fun to me, but here's what I did. I, I made 100 dials, and I, and I contacted at least 50-plus people. It was a goal, 50 people to contact. They may have hung up on me immediately, but I, I contacted them and then set five appointments a day. Within two weeks, because he was telling everybody, within two weeks, all the big senior advisors wanted me to work for them. I was asked by management to give presentations to all the other junior advisors on how to cold call. I was within four months given my own senior advisor branch. Within four years, I became a vice president of a bank. It's doing things more than expected, better than expected, and quicker than expected that sets you apart and it always will benefit you to do that or take that approach. Yeah, I, I think that, uh, first off, I love this story. Keep telling the stories because I, <laughs> people Don't resonate with that, right? They <laughs> resonate with stories, but it, this is coming at such a, it's such a time, like this time is really needed to hear what you're saying because of everything that's been going on with COVID. There's yeah. still a lot of people that are trying to get back on their feet. There's people that are in transition that's trying to figure out what their next steps and just how to stand out. And so I like that in, you know, in our discussion today, you talked a little bit about how you first navigate and find what that career path looks like. And I know you're going to share a little bit more about how people can do that, but then also some of the things that help you stand out, right? Like going that extra mile, adding a lot mm -hmm. of value. And these are really the things that help people move forward in their career, land a career, sustain a career. So I think right. it's great. Dave, I would love to move into the power section of the interview. So oh. just a couple rapid questions that I'm going to throw your way. All right. The first is if you can leave the world with one final message, Message. I always like to call it the golden nugget. What would your golden nugget be to everyone? Well, I, I, I steal things from other people, from other brilliant people. And, you know, uh, Kobe Bryant was quoted to say, hey, find your 4 a.m. 
find that passion with that thing that it, that, that get that you get up for without an alarm, without ever hesitating that, you know, that you look forward to never, uh, you know, you, you never do a TGIF thing. It, 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 whenever, whenever you're called on to be present, I know I probably answered an email to you on a Sunday it, because I love what I do and I love the people that I work with. And so I just always encourage people to find that 4 a.m. Um, that uh, and, and, it, and it, it comes with some work, you know, just like we we're talking about earlier, getting trapped in a job. And, you know, and, and I'm sorry if you work at Best Buy, but, you know, if, if that's probably not going to be your 4 a.m. You know, that's not going to be your passion. Uh, it was something that you did. So it's, there's always everyone just, you know, gets angst about making a pivot or making a change or just like, well, oh, gosh, should we have a baby? We can't afford it. Do it. You'll figure it out. You know, and if you're, if you're not happy, it, this is the rest of your life. And unfortunately, we spend the majority of our time at our job. Do something that makes you happy. You know, and I, I just can't. And I, obviously, I found I love what I do. I talk about it every day for four years and, and I get excited about it every day. So Absolutely. Yeah. And if you can leave. So I always also like to ask the second question is values. Values are so important. And I know we've talked about it a little bit. But what's one value that's a complete non-negotiable for you? passion. Uh, so, you know, when you look at the core list of values, uh, I would say the majority of them touch on, I touch on uh, most of them. <laughs> One, I, I'm not good at, at all is efficiency, uh, but the core value is passion because if you have passion for what you do, uh, I have passion in my faith and uh, and I and I, and I I do as much as I can within that. I, I, I'm helping launch a faith-based sports camp called Mission Sports. Awesome. Uh, I love working with kids and I'm very passionate about working with kids. I volunteer on weekends and, and hold camps. Um, I'm passionate about helping people and, uh, you know, and path Two does that. So it was just, it's just a, an instant, a direct correlation. And then I'm passionate about being of service, you know, and, and being in the community and uh, mentoring and, and those types of things and, and giving my time because it's actually selfish because I feel so great every time I do it. Every time I work with or talk to a mentor or a youth group, I walk away rejuvenated and feeling great about myself, giving of myself. Yeah, I mean, that's that's really the key. So let's talk a little bit. I have one more question for you, but let's talk a little bit about Path 2. So okay. tell us how we can learn more about you, where we can find you, and then talk to us about Path 2 and you know where we can go. And I know that there, like I said, a lot of people that are in transition that are on LinkedIn, parents sure. that have young adults that are trying to find their career. So I, I, that's a great resource I'd love for you to talk about. Well, uh, so the website is www.path2.net. And um, and our program is different than, uh, I mentioned assessments earlier, and we are not an assessment. A lot of people say, oh yeah, I've already done something like that. And uh, I'm supposed to be a funeral attendant or a, or an exterminator. Um, and that's the kind of results that we get. I've been told I'm a food line supervisor or, you know, um, and I've run three businesses. So they're, they're not very accurate. Ours is completely transparent. And we take you step by step through you, through all of your intrinsic characteristics, beginning with your personality, which is what you love, yeah. your aptitude, which is what you're good at. And then we ask, how much, how much education do you need or how much education are you willing to get? How much income do you need? Is there going to be a job in this career in the next six to eight years? Uh, this is all data that's in the U.S. Department of Labor's uh, ONET. It's downloaded into our program. And then we have you consider your interests. And these are working with your hands or reading. And we rank all of the interests. And you take the top five, apply those to the careers. The next is preferences or work environment. How do you want to work for the rest of your life? Do you want to work indoors or outdoors? Do you want to work at a team or by yourself? Um, 40 hours a week or like you and I, whatever it takes to get it done. So are you entrepreneurial or not? You know, do you, do you need something conservative? Rank those and then apply those to the careers. And then we apply the traits. And the beauty of the top two careers that resonate aren't based on a black box algorithm. They're based on you. And we coach you and guide you through you utilizing our proprietary program. I love that. Dave, thank you so much. So those of you that are watching and that are listening on the podcast, make sure you check out Dave, visit him on LinkedIn. I'll put all of the, um, I'll put all the handles and the website and everything in the, in the show notes as well. Thank and the 10% discount through your, through all your listeners will offer a 10% discount through a rise up 
Rise Up 10, you can put the code in there, Rise Up 10 at checkout and, and 10% off to anybody that, that comes through the program. If you're listening to somebody, just refer it out. That'd be great. Awesome. Thank you so much. We're, we're very grateful for that. So we'll put the 10% code in there as well um, for all of our community and our listeners. Thank you, Jay, for that. And then lastly, so as you know, we are Rise Up For You. What comes to mind when you hear that phrase? I, I just think of um, finding what it is about you that makes you the best version of you so you can make a difference, whether it be in your workplace or your family or your community, but you need to be the best version of you first. So find those things that, that do that for you and don't be afraid to take care of yourself. You know, in order for you to be of any value, you've got to be happy and the best version of yourself. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dave. Sure. Thank you everyone for tuning in. This is the Rise Up For You Workplace Solution and Business Podcast and web series. So excited to be here live on LinkedIn. We'll be back every single week. Sometimes I'm by myself. Sometimes I have an incredible guest like Dave. And you can check us out on every major podcast platform as well as YouTube and our website, riseupforyou.com. Thank you, everyone. We will see you next time. Thank you, Dave. Thanks, Dana.